Here I am, in front of my computer with KDE6 on Debian 13, trying to edit a video with KDN Live. The learning curve is steep, the interface doesn't seem particularly friendly, and my computer with only 16 gigabytes of RAM struggles to keep up between Firefox and video editing. And while waiting for the timeline to load, I received a private comment from a kind viewer who appreciated my video on Slackware. And suddenly I stopped to reflect. Where are we going? This isn't meant to be a rhetorical question. I'm seriously wondering where we're heading, not just from a technological standpoint, but as a society, as users, as human beings who interact with technology every day. Why should I need 32 or 64 gigabits of RAM when four or five years ago I was doing the exact same things with eight gigabits? Browsing the web, writing documents, watching videos, editing multimedia content, the fundamental activities have remained the same. Yet my modern computer, with computing power that was science fiction 30 years ago, struggles to do what much less powerful machines did without problems in the past. How is this possible? The answer is uncomfortable. It's not that we need more power to do more things. It's that we've passively accepted increasingly inefficient, heavier, more resource-hungry software. This great leap toward the future, this technological progression sold to us as inevitable, I increasingly see as an empty obsession, a package that costs more than its contents. We already have everything we need, but we keep running toward what exactly? My computer uses fundamentally the same basic technology as 30 years ago. Processors that process data, memory that stores it, storage that maintains it. Yet they're convincing us that we must always push further, with systems that require more resources, resources that require more powerful systems, in a vicious circle that has no end. And you know what the beautiful part is? Often the new is just bloatware disguised as features. Inefficiency sold as modernity. Complexity for its own sake that adds no real value to our experience. Take Firefox. In 2010, it ran perfectly with 2 gigabytes of RAM. Today, the same browser, to display fundamentally the same type of content, text, images, videos, can easily consume 8 to 10 gigabytes. What has really changed? Websites are still websites. Videos are still videos. The truth is we've lost the culture of optimization. When resources seem infinite, why worry about efficiency? But what worries me most isn't our wallets. It's not even the planet's resources, although these are very serious problems. What worries me is what this is doing to us, to our mentality. This egocentric delirium of omnipotence, this obsession with power, performance, and technological superiority is actually pushing us toward the opposite of what it promises. We're losing critical capacity. We accept that newer automatically means better, without ever asking better for whom, better why. We're losing self-sufficiency. Everything must be in the cloud, everything must be smart, everything must be connected. But what happens when the connection drops? When the service shuts down? When the company decides to change the rules of the game? We're losing simplicity. Every function must have submenus. Every application must have a thousand features that 90% of users will never use. But complexity isn't progress. Often it's the opposite. And above all, we're losing control. Everything becomes a black box. We no longer understand how the things we use daily work. And when you don't understand, you don't control. And when you don't control, you are controlled. Let's stop for a moment and think. What will I need in 10 years to do what I do today? Browse, write documents, open a media player, read a digital book, edit videos. At the current rate, I'll probably need 64 gigs of RAM to open a browser, a dedicated GPU to write in a word processor, a mandatory 5G connection to access files I've saved locally on my computer. And all this to do exactly the same things I do today that I did five years ago, that were done 10 years ago with a fraction of the resources. We seek power we'll never use, features we don't understand, complexity that makes us weaker, a future that distances us from the present and our real needs. I'm not a technology extremist. I always try to have lucid and balanced reflections looking at things from different perspectives. But when I arrived at this awareness, when I saw this picture in its entirety, I thought, what an absurdity. That feeling you get when you realize that your needs are the same as 10 years ago, but technology is 100 times more powerful, yet you're 10 times less efficient and 100 times more dependent. 
The real question isn't where are we going? The real question is why are we going there? And the answer is simple and terrifying at the same time. Because someone is selling us the journey, disguising it as the destination. We always talk about resources and future. We talk about freedom and open standards, but we never talk about the fact that all this is draining us. Not our wallets, not the planet's resources, although these are real problems, but literally us. Our ability to think critically, to be autonomous, to maintain control over our technological experience. This technological treadmill we're on isn't just exhausting our hardware, it's rewiring our brains. We're becoming conditioned to accept that normal means broken, that simple means primitive, that efficient means outdated. We've internalized the marketing message that consumption equals progress. But here's what they don't want you to realize. The most revolutionary act in today's tech world isn't upgrading, it's refusing to upgrade unnecessarily. It's saying no to artificial obsolescence. It's choosing tools based on what they do, not how new they are. I look at my old ThinkPad running a minimal Linux distribution, and it does everything I need with a fraction of the resources. It doesn't track me. It doesn't force updates. It doesn't try to sell me subscriptions. It just works. And that simplicity, that reliability, feels almost subversive in today's world. The tech industry has convinced us that we're consumers first and users second. But we used to be builders, tinkerers, people who understood our tools. We used to fix things instead of replacing them. We used to value longevity over novelty. Think about it. When did we decide that a computer should become obsolete after three years? When did we accept that software should slow down our hardware instead of making it faster? When did we agree that privacy should be traded for convenience? that ownership should be replaced with subscriptions. These weren't natural evolutions. They were business decisions presented as technological inevitabilities. And we bought into them because the alternative seemed like standing still while the world moved forward. But maybe standing still isn't such a bad thing. Maybe asking whether we really need that new feature, that new service, that new device is exactly what we should be doing. Maybe the real innovation is in saying no. Hey, let's stop for a moment. We have the right to say enough. We have the right to choose simplicity. We have the right to use tools that serve us instead of serving the tools. Real progress isn't always having more. Sometimes, real progress is having the courage to say, this is enough, this works, this is sufficient for me. The future doesn't have to be about endless consumption and complexity. It could be about sustainability, both environmental and mental. It could be about tools that empower us instead of controlling us. It could be about technology that enhances human capability without diminishing human agency. But that future requires us to stop running on this treadmill long enough to ask the uncomfortable questions, to challenge the narrative that more is always better, to remember that technology should be our servant, not our master. The choice is still ours to make. The question is, are we brave enough to make it?